to appoint a monitor to oversee the LEA's correction of all remaining noncompliance, and to apply additional interventions and sanctions as designated in federal and state law as deemed necessary and appropriate to the circumstances. Those reviews resulted in the decision by the Commissioner of Education to assign a Texas Education Agency monitor to San Benito to help the district in its efforts to appropriately serve students. Ms. Barbara Mabry, and she's sitting right back here, has been named as the monitor. Ms. Mabry has worked in the field of education for over 25 years. Her work experience during these years has included working as a director of special education, a coordinator of special programs, and a teacher. The monitor's responsibilities will include, but not be limited to, oversee the immediate correction of remaining student-specific and systemic issues of noncompliance, oversee the completion of the implementation of all activities of the corrective action plan, identify and correct the causal factors for and barriers to the achievement of compliance. She also will recommend any action to be taken by a principal superintendent or the LAA school board as necessary to achieve these charges. Every month she will report back to TEA in a written report regarding the district's activities and progress and if necessary she'll advise the commissioner on any additional sanctions that may be, need to be considered. The school district in accordance with the Texas Education Code section 39.110 will pay the cost of the monitor. The daily rate for the monitor is $600 a day for an eight-hour day. It is prorated, $75 an hour. If she works four hours, she gets paid four. If she works 10, she only gets paid for eight. Uh, so it's, it's an eight-hour day. Expenses for meals and lodging will be in, reimbursed at the state-approved rate of $85 per night and $36 per day for meals. But she has to have actual uh, receipts. She just can't put down 36, 36, 36. If she eats at the Whataburger for $5.35, I better have a receipt for $5.35. Uh, and also the receipts for the hotel and stuff like that. They, they will be reimbursed at actual expenses. Uh, it's the commissioner's desire that the school district, and she is also reimbursed at 50 cents a mile. I know the state has gone up to 51, but that's too hard to figure that penny in. And, uh, uh, so we, I've, it, it's not mandatory 51 anyway, uh, so it's, we stayed at 50 cents a mile for the mileage. It's the commissioner's desire that the school district work with the administration and staff be in a cooperative manner to address the deficiencies. You're urged to take advantage of her background and expertise and move forward as quickly as possible. How long she works with your district depends on you. The observations of the monitor and the recommendations made to the superintendent and the board of trustees, as I said, will be reported on a monthly basis. What she will do is she will write a report. There is a template that we have. She has it. She will do a report on this template. Everything is mailed to me. Nothing is mailed to the school district. We read it. There's about four to six sets of eyes at the agency that will read these reports. I should get the reports somewhere between the 7th and the 10th of every month. So like for February, on March 7th to the 10th, if not earlier, I should get her report. What I do is we read it, we approve it, and then I start making, I make a copy. I send the original to Mr. Lamone. It's his responsibility to share that report with the school board. It's for open records. It's not anything to hide. We're not trying to hide anything. But I send him the original. I send a copy back to the monitor, and then we keep a copy on our files at the TEA. Same way with the uh, expense report. She sends me all her receipts, her hours. I have uh, myself and one other person that we verify that everybody's multiplied two, you know, two times two and gotten four, and that all the receipts and everything adds up. I put it all together in a nice package with a cover sheet, I send the original to Mr. Lamone because he needs all the receipts and stuff for his auditors when you do your audit report. So he gets the originals. A copy goes to the monitor. We keep a copy up at TEA. So basically the district gets the receipts. They, basically the district gets the originals and everything. And it's his responsibility to share those with, with the board and whomever wants to see. We're not trying to hide anything. Um, it's our desire, as I said, that all parties work together 
as you seek to resolve the concerns that have been raised. I will tell you, we've met with Ms. Cantu for about an hour uh, already tonight. Um, uh, and and tomorrow, uh, Ms. Mabry is going to meet with Ms. Cantu for another however long, two to three hours. I know Ms. Cantu is going, is going out of town to, to a meeting. But uh, she, has, she has a lot of things that I can already tell you that a lot of people didn't have that I've been, we have about 15 to 16 RF monitors slash conservators out across the state right now. So she, I think Mrs. Cantu has got things uh, going the right way. We just hope to get them finished up. I would like to also say, as I've told our, our monitor, this is only about a five to eight day a month job. This is not a day, this is not a five day a week job. As much as she can do emails and stuff to save on travel and time, we encourage that. Um, she lives in, Vic she is moving to Victoria, Texas, is where she lives. Um, and so um, I, I personally am an ex superintendent. I know about finances and I watch it. And, and I don't have, you know, I, I, we're not here to, I'm not here to find people a full time job. And our deal is to, get them in and get them out too. Now, it, it may take a while. Special Ed's a little, little different than finances. I deal a lot with finances too, but uh, Special Ed is a little tricky on some things and it has to be 100% correct. Uh, but um, other than that, uh, I, I'll try to answer any questions. Uh, if you have, I will tell you, if Mr. I've talked to Mr. Lamone on the phone a couple times, I think maybe three <coughs> times. Uh, if he's not happy with what's going on, I encourage him to call and tell me. I, he has my straight line number right straight to my desk. Uh, I'm not afraid. I, I have thick skin. <laughs> and, and so. Uh, okay, you're talking about students in our, in our district? Yeah, well, it's, just, it's the RF students, is your residential students, is how you, the district is serving the RF students. Okay, are there are, are students, Teresa, or are they students from Cameron County? Or what, what are they? Our students. Um, so the services, if they have eligibility for special ed, we're required to provide the service. We're going to move well, to the record. I wanted to make sure that, that we can come up to the mic. So it, it's Daryl Hester, and that services any child that's arrested within the county. We also, and it's short term. Generally, the students won't be there um, maximum 30 days, but can be released as soon as the judge gets there. So they're from throughout the county, that's what, yes, what you're sir, telling us. Yes, we've had students from Houston, Louisiana. If, um, if they're arrested within the county, it doesn't matter where they're from, then they're ours. Um, this year, I think we've only had one San Benito student. All the rest have been out of district. Um, well, that's our, good to hear. I thought we were having a problem here with our no, students here our, locally. No, sir. Our second facility is Amador Rodriguez, and those are students that have been placed there by the courts for long term. Mm -hmm. Our third facility is SCAN. That is serving children and adolescents in need. And all of our children up to present have been from the Laredo area. And the reason they chose San Benito to place the home, it's on Paso Real. And those students are placed here because either drugs, gangs. So they're trying to remove them from that environment. They place them here and then we're required to pick up the services, whatever they may be. Of all of the, and, and I have all the documentation, of all of the students that are listed here, none of them have been ours. There's only one student that is a San Benito student, and that's from Sunny, uh, Sunny Glen Children's Home. And we say San Benito because they've resided, even though the child is from the Corpus area, has resided in San Benito for CPS placed him, there's three children last year, but only one is special ed. So it's not any of our home campuses. However, uh, Mr. Limon, as well as Ms. Sanchez, have always included them, and we treat them just like any other campus in our district, because while they're here, we consider them our students. And how long have we had SCAN? It has been here about a year and a half. A year and a half. Um, 
it, there has been talk recently that perhaps they're considering relocating and then of course at that time that residential facility will no longer be ours um, I think what's really important is with special ed it's a hundred percent item a hundred percent of the indicators mm -hmm. it can't be 99 percent so in some cases you'll see it was only one student out of but nevertheless with special ed it must be 100 percent